You're watching Swipe coming up on this week's show. From paintbrush to pixel, when old gaming meets new. Millennial shopping, I get hands on with a new way to try before you buy. And ever feel like you're being followed? Hello and welcome to Swipe. This week from the studios of Creative Assembly, a British video games maker that's been releasing titles since the 80s. And now they're bringing one of tabletop gaming's biggest franchises to the virtual world. And it's not the first time that traditional and digital gaming have worked in tandem. Here's Chris. Suiting up for battle. It might not look like it, but this is how you become an orc. It's part of the motion capture process used to create characters in a new video game. All the markers that we put on your body um, are relative to the joints in your body. Um, and the, the cameras that, that you see around you here will, three of them at a time, will capture each one of those markers in 3D space. The wireframe model shows my movement, and then layers are added so the designers can turn me into any character they want. Maybe not the scariest orc. Hopefully the finished product is a bit more fearsome than I am. The title this studio is working on is based on the popular tabletop strategy game Warhammer. In that, players assemble and paint an army of figurines, pitting them against each other in turn-based battles. How we control the animation. And much like the real-life painting process, the team at Creative Assembly refine the crude models created in the motion capture studio. From an animation point of view, a lot of those models look good as a model. If they move well, it's a different story. For example, we have a lot of characters with huge uh, headpieces or flags or um, massive shoulder pads. So, so we raise this arm and suddenly he's got spikes going through his head. So, so while it would look good as a miniature, it might not look quite as good in motion. They shall fall. The finishing like touch sees voice them. actors add speech to the characters, bringing them to life on the battlefield. The full might of chaos is arrayed against you, Black Ravens. It's not the first time tabletop gaming has featured in the virtual world. The Dawn of War series, seen here, is based on a futuristic Warhammer spin-off. Diversifying into video games is a massive marketing opportunity. Tabletop companies getting involved with video games opens up an entirely new audience to them. They used to view them as threats. Um, they used to think that people were going to play video games instead of playing with their toys or with their, their board games. But actually what they're finding is that there's an entirely different generation, a digital generation, a younger generation of people that are discovering things like Warhammer through the video games first and then going over to the toys. There's definitely a crossover between these two audiences and these two markets. And similar companies have taken advantage of this appeal. Lego almost went bankrupt in the early 2000s, but expanding into the video game market helped it turn its fortunes around. Today, it's the second largest toy company in the world. So, video games and traditional games have lots in common. But while they both serve the same audience, there's no need for them to go to war over customers. Chris Cregan, Sky News. Now, still to come, I get to go shopping in the future. But first, here's a roundup of some of this week's tech news. It's being touted as a selfie stick with wings. The hover camera uses facial recognition to follow you as you move around, taking photos and 4K video. It can also be controlled through a smartphone, and the makers, Beijing-based Zero Zero Robotics, say it can fit inside your purse. Crutches just got a facelift. A team in the US have designed ones with shock-absorbing feet and arm cradles that take pressure off your hands and wrists. A range of attachments for different surfaces are also set to come soon. And while we're focusing on movement, take a look at X-Sense. It's a wearable with sensors that capture the sounds of your muscles contracting, your heart beating and blood flowing so that you can do things like play instruments and video games and do digital drawings with your movements. And two students from the University of Washington have created a pair of gloves that turn sign language into speech. My name is Thomas. Navid Azodi and Thomas Pryor won a $10,000 prize for this wearable device. It records hand movements before transmitting the data wirelessly to a computer that works out what's being said and reads the words aloud. <laughs> Who said farming was hard work? Stay with us for our games review. 
Now, we've heard it all before. The way we shop is changing. More and more of us are buying things online. But what if you prefer to actually go to a physical store? Well, it turns out that's set to change too, as I've been finding out. Jill, here we are outside what looks like a normal store, but this is a shop of the future, am I right? It is. As a matter of fact, the mannequin is talking to me. The mannequin is talking to you how? So, listen, it is talking to me. It has beacon, so it's alerting me that when I walk by... On your phone? On my phone. So basically it's saying, hello Jill, would you like to see some of these products? Would you actually like to buy them? I could find out more. And if I wanted to buy it, it's just a click. But see, so, if I was walking past the store and there's a nice skirt in the window, I'm going to stop and look at it. I don't need an alert to tell me to stop. But can you imagine if while you're admiring the skirt, it's prompting you to buy? Maybe they're actually giving you a coupon to buy. Yeah, but who has time to stop in the street well, and buy? But you do have time to remember the skirt and go home and log on and then buy it. It's immersive. It's right then and now. So, Jill, we've now come inside the showroom of the future, and you're going to try and sell me a car. Yeah, and the car's not here. So you're going to buy a car by interacting with this tablet. This just looks like a car website. I know, but this is different. So let me have you give it a go. Okay, what am so I having a go at? Okay, so now touch the door. Oh. Okay, now, now pretend you're getting into the car. So oh, wow. Forward. Am I actually going to get in? Right. Oh. There you go. Now you can do some fun things, Oh, I'm right? in the car! So why don't you try out some of the things on the dash? So, so it's so a real try before you buy. I can sit in the exactly. driver's seat. Okay, let's, what, what can I touch? Will so, these so, buttons so work? You can try turning on the engine. To lean around the steering wheel a bit. There oh, there's the key. <laughs> and I can hear the engine. Yeah, there you go. You can actually turn on the windshield wipers. So do you think car retailers will adopt this kind of technology. So we believe in partnership with Google that Accenture, we can actually do some of this cool technology. The you horn. The horn. Yeah. Some of this cool technology to give it more of a fun, immersive feel. It's very clever. And it's certainly very interactive, but I love the smell of a new car. I'm not going to get that here, am I? Potentially, there's other things that you could be immersed in as well. So maybe all of your senses aren't going crazy, but maybe the touch and the feel of the car and moving things around, you can actually feel like you're there. I know, but I, I just don't know whether that really feels like I'm in a car. It, it looks like it, but I don't feel like I'm really well, touching the steering wheel. Maybe well. part of the selling experience is changing the color. Or what does the dash look like? Because they can have every type in the showroom. So maybe you're seeing just what could be different. You're a great saleswoman, Jill. <laughs> Recognize this guy. He's part of the inspiration for the video game you saw in Chris's piece earlier. But now it's time for some more modern warfare. Here's Gavin with this week's games review. Remember Panzer General or Battle Isle from the 90s? And have you ever wondered, what would that turn-based strategy game be like in modern times? Well, that's what the creators of this game thought as well and came up with a brilliant solid idea. Problem is, none of the software publishers they went to thought it was a good idea, but they didn't let their dream die. They started a Kickstarter campaign. Now this is a real success story of Kickstarter. They tapped into a fan base and through that they were able to fund the whole project, including development. It's basically based in a world where war has torn it apart and you need to start again from scratch. There are single player modes, multiplayer modes, and of course the good thing is back in the 90s you didn't have the ability to be able to play online in multiplayer, which of course you are able to do in this. Eclipse is the second of four DLC packs to come out for Call of Duty Black Ops 3 this year. Now, obviously, I don't need to tell you about the game. It was one of the biggest selling games of last year. What I do need to tell you about is this new pack which has come out recently. There are four brand new maps to explore. There's Spire, which is probably my most favorite. This is like a futuristic uh, suborbital airport in the clouds. Knockout, which is a stage for a kung fu tournament. So this looks uh, very martial artsy and oriental. You've also got Rift as well, which is a futuristic military base. And Verge, which is a reimagination of the classic of Banzai. Professional Farmer 2017. Now in a games review section on a TV show, you may not think you would hear of a game 
about agriculture. But think about it, in the UK, it's a huge business. It is very, very realistic. The graphics are amazing. The uh, equipment and the vehicles you use are actual real vehicles and real equipment that the farmers would use. The scenarios are the same. So if you've ever fancied running your own farm, like harvesting crops or seeing some animals, but don't want to get up at 5 a.m. in the morning or smell of cow's poo, this could be the game for you. Well, that's it for this week. Take a look at Sky News on mobile, tablet, catch up and Sky Q for all the latest tech stories throughout the week. And we'll see you again next time. Bye bye.